race week saw the much anticipated matchup between the two top ranked Australian TP52s. Matt Allen's newly designed boat and boat and Marcus Blackmore's 2015 European Super Series champion Hooligan, the formerly named Azura. As you can see, the day started out in wonderful conditions and the boats were neck and neck all around the long course. Getting to the first mark, Ichiban is in front of Hooligan and they're ready to set their kites. Now with their spinnakers up, it's just a matter of speed and tactics. It's north to the island, round it, and then back home. First of the island and Jai Browned is Ichiban. Skipper Allen said it was good to have good downwind, upwind, reaching and jibing and good current and the wind shear around the top of the moles. It was difficult. It was warm also and wet. Close behind Ichiban, Hilligan ran into lighter winds and as our drone comes into the stern of the boat, we can see the crew working hard. Ichiban won the day by over four minutes. My name's Ichiban.
name is Sean Langman. I've been the owner and skipper of a almost 60 called Team Australia. Well, Witty and I go back a way. Um, I still call him the kid because I'm a little bit older than Witty and uh, he sailed 18 foot skips as the kid um, in the early 80s and uh, always had a fairly healthy respect of each other's abilities. So it's um, how we ended up here together again um, really comes down to the fact that I could see that Team Scullywag's uh, portfolio was growing. We chased our way around uh, a number of seas in the Pacific Ocean and just really making sure that we kept the mast pointing to the sky. Now that the Orma 60 is up in Asia under the Scullywag um, uh, livery, uh, because it's an uh, obvious progression that uh, this boat that's set records in France and in Australia should now come to Asia and, uh, and uh, kick some ass. She can be anyone there. Hello, welcome back to Cascais in Portugal. Cascais, a beautiful, authentic sailing destination. Around the sailing club just now, it's midsummer. There's loads of kids learning to sail, starting out on their career and learning an affinity for the ocean. We're uh, not only trying to do a good job here as, a, as teams, but we're also trying to, to show the way and, and, and lead the younger generation of sailors and, and also all of our families and everybody in doing a good job with, uh, with the environment. So that's the goal here with the Super Series. And I think for everyone going out on the water, it's impossible not to care. It's amazing to see uh, the awareness that's starting to happen about you know the plastic in the ocean and the junk and uh, we see it every day but most people don't and uh, you think that it's just a dumping ground and it disappears but it's just not the truth and it's really cool for me to see the world starting to realize that and it's important. Well, a coastal race starts in a lighter breeze, eight to nine knots on the start line, a little bit less than expected. Allegra start off the pin end of the line nicely with Quantum Racing one third up. At the committee boat end, it's Luna Rossa and Phoenix, and the right side is favored once again. In the right shift, it's really all about the ley line. Quantum Racing, Allegra, Sled and Phoenix all nail that nicely, and around the top mark in great shape. And a jibe set at the top mark, but up the second long beat, back up to Cabo de Rasso. It's short tacking up the shoreline. Phoenix make a nice gain in the snakes and ladders up the shore. Luna Rossa catch a crab pot and lose four places down to ninth and have to catch up. And Sled make a nice gain down that run, chasing Quantum Racing through the leeward gate. But Quantum Racing hold on to win. Phoenix get second, just ahead of a photo finish for third. Sled get third, Allegra fourth, and Luna Rossa recover up to fifth. It is great to be here in Qashqai and to get some racing and some stronger wins. It's all incredibly close right across the fleet. It was never a dull moment, never over. And I think with four races to go, it's still you know, a lot to play for us. Lots of action uh, right up against the shoreline. I don't know how many tacks I lost, lost count. There were so many. That was anything but boring. And the standings, Quantum Racing on 11 points, Azura on 18 points, and Allegra also on 18 points. Who said that coastal races were boring? Anything but today here in Cascais. Quantum Racing leading all the way through and stepping ever closer to the world title. Join us again for more racing.
All points of the compass were covered in today's long and medium distance island courses, stretching as far north as Double Cone. Fry RC Division 1, Hamilton Island Division 1 and Multi Hull Racing. Marcus Blackmore's TP52 Hooligan is now only one point off Matt Allen's TP52 Yaki Ban thanks to a corrected time scoop in race 3. The caliber of the 252 crews and the hot competition between the like boats has the sailing media covering race week suitably impressed. It's very close racing between us and Yaki Ban. It's a case of who gets the start, who gets the first shift. In the light airs we have little bit of height on them, but as Mike Fletcher, our coach for some years said, he who makes the least mistakes wins. Blackmore shared back at the dock as his team celebrated. Amongst hooligan star-studded crew is laser gold medalist Tom Slingsby. Calling tactics and Spanish helmsman Rafa Trujillo, a silver medalist in the fin class in the 2004 Athens Olympics and an America's Cup and Volvo Ocean Race Sailor. He'd been living in New Zealand and the Australian sailing team, who we sponsor, managed to encourage him to come and live in Australia and coach the Finns for the next Olympic Games, said Blackmore. I always steer the starts and I did the first windy legs today and Rafa does the rest. He's a lovely bloke, he's fantastic, we just don't understand what he's saying some of the time that's all. IRC Division 2 is proving tough for those trying to chase down Ray Roberts' boat and 40 Team Hollywood, given their perfect scorecard of three corrected time wins. The boat's probably one of the nicest boats I've ever sailed. Marcelino Botin has designed a beautiful boat and we now just have to sail her well, Roberts said post-race on Tuesday August 22, 2018. Today was a very tricky day of sailing. We had a really tight race with Victor Iyer. They were ahead of for most of the race but we got a break on them. They're sailing really well and close to us. It's on every day. A broken rider pulled up the New Zealand Rapido 60 Romanza and they weren't able to finish their long race. Dale Mitchell's Lombard Dry Morticia leads the Multel Racing Division from Stardust. Hamilton Island Division 1 leader drum fire. Philip Neal's superb Hoek TC78 design, is ahead of Robert Vaughan's Muir 64 Van Diemen 3 on account back in the point score for what should be renamed the Grand Division with the beautiful hull shapes of the classic designs among the vintage Maxes such as Condor. The Hamilton Island Cruiser Racer and Multal Divisions, non-spinnaker and trailables started from the eastern course and enjoyed variations on a theme that included a downwind run in flat water through the scenic Long Island Sound. The trailables were the first home, rewarded for their long haul to the eastern start line with a straight run west to Pine Island and home.
Manu. I'm from Miami, USA. Lydia, I'm uh, from Poland. I'm Cavalli Nicolo, and I live in Lake Garda in Italy. It's Masha, Sharon from Singapore. Omar Khalifa Al Kartubi, and I am from Oman. Metro Wang, um, I come from Hong Kong. I'm Garando, and I'm from France. Selina, I'm from Argentina. So, Chen Haoza, I'm from China. I'm from Prada, I'm from Brazil. I went surf because I like water sports. Uh, I like uh, windsurfing for the wind and my friends. I did windsurf because uh, it's a family sport. No, I windsurf because it's fun. I windsurf because I like going fast and I think it's the funnest thing you can do. I windsurf because I love it. I do windsurf because it's the best sport in the world. The conditions yesterday gave a lot of confidence to sailors today, and I think they enjoyed it. As you see all shapes and sizes, obviously, because we have a, a big age range now in these uh, techno fleets. Uh, and for sure, I, uh, I think once they've realised that they can manage, full of confidence, they continue. I think it's good for the rest of the week. championship we have all the condition because in my opinion if you have all the condition you will have you are going to have a fair champion
the Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup features some of the largest, most powerful and spectacular yachts. Sailing in direct combat in one of the most demanding yet stunningly beautiful locations in the yachting world. Porto Cervo on Sardinia's Costa Smeralda plays host on the 2nd of September to the 29th edition of this much-loved event. The boats are at the cutting edge of sailing, exhibiting the latest innovations and advances in design and technology. When the 45 participating yachts, ranging in size from 18 meters to gigantic 44-meter behemoths, take to the water, it's one of yachting's most glorious sights. The variety of classes is breathtaking, led by the Maxi 72s, racing machines crewed by top professionals and driven metaphorically and literally by the energy and passion of their owners. While the 72s exemplify modern sailing at its finest, the J-Class yachts take us back in time, redolent of the 1930s and sailing's heritage. These graceful yachts stir the soul of any sailing romantic. Then there are the Wally yachts, high-performance cruisers with expansive decks and aggressive hull lines. Even larger comes the Super Maxi class, reserved for Goliaths measuring over 100 feet. They epitomize luxury afloat, pushing the technological and design boundaries to the very limit. 2018 marks the 60th anniversary of Rolex's proud association with yachting. Perhaps no event embodies that relationship more than the Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup.